Why? You Why? cut the music early. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean cut it early? I waited until it was through playing. Well, I don't know. It wasn't playing out my end. Cut the music early. Uh, well, hang on. Here we go. Hang on. No, 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 no. You don't have to do that. <laughs> I can play it again. Oh. <laughs> How are y'all, everybody? Uh, let's see who all we got here. Uh, yeah, you better get up on top. I can't. I, I had to look up. <laughs> all right, uh, Mark, Jim, Victor, uh, Mark again up north. Chuck Forbes, hello from Florida. Brian, how are you there, Brian? Good to see you, sir. Uh, Cole Woodworks. Perimeter alert. Driveway. Hmm. Somebody's here. Sounds uh, like it. Yeah. Uh <coughs> Perimeter alert. Delivery box. Hmm. Okay. Uh where was I at? <laughs> Soaking in rays. Vester Whitmore. Uh I think that's Brandy coming back. She went to the store. Uh Steve Ferguson. Pepper Lapine. Josh Jarvis. Jack of the shop, how are you, sir? Uh, Napa, Sharon, oh, there's a whole bunch of people. Mr. Larry Broom, hello, sir. And uh, Greg Wilson, photog nature photography. See, Greg would like it over here. I got plenty of nature. Uh, DJS, hello from Pix Pittsburgh. And Stephen Holcomb from Kansas, cool. Uh, no, Mark, you're not gonna sneak up on me very much. I've, uh, I, I, I've, I've, I've spent a career of uh, making people not like me, so I like to know when they're coming. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, uh, there's been more than one occasion that, you know, people have not been happy with with the services that they received. Uh, so you, you never know. But, yeah, it's... a. Uh, but it's, it's, it's brandy, though. You know, we're working in IT, a lot of times we, we do a lot of pissing off of people as well. I don't think it's the same, Steve. Uh, Probably I, not, I, but I they really sure don't. think so. I, I, don't think, I don't think it's the same thing. You ask some of our users, they probably <laughs> think it's the same, but no, it's not. So, hey, you know what would be great is if that fan turned off on that thing. I hear that's a... Well, uh, they're they're talking about that in the next version. Uh -huh. uh, yep. I'm just knocking out some. Uh, woo -woo. I got a whole pile of these things I got to do, and I realized nice. I had some scrap material that uh, fits them nicely. Cool. See, I just so happen to have a bunch of little offcuts right here. It's good to use them up. Woo. Of course, you know, after a while, you start wondering how much of a wood hoarder you are when you've got, you know, little three inch by six inch pieces and you're like you know i can make something out of that all right so i gotta have uh I have five of those so i can just go ahead and hit the start button again so yeah uh it's been a busy day guys I, I thought maybe i'd be through with all this stuff by now but it ain't happening oh uh, and then i got i got called today too apparently i'm gonna have like 15 full-size baseball bats that i've got to engrave uh, this mm. coming up week that are on a deadline. So baseball season has been really good to me this year <clears throat> so far. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Yeah. Those little well, bases that I made the other day, uh, they posted pictures of those on uh, Facebook and the, 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 the page just started blowing up with people going, Hey, how much are those? Hey, how much are those? No, I mean, that's, so, uh, like we tell people, you know, you get a couple of good things out there and you never know what's going to hit. And all of a sudden, you get get more requests for them. So, Hello good there, problem Patrick. to have as long as you priced it right. Yeah, I mean, I ain't making a killing off of them, but I, I mean, well, I ain't hurting myself. Right, that's the thing. I said, I mean, <laughs> you, 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 as long as you're not giving it away. Um, yeah, because the the it takes like five minutes on the CNC. I take a two foot by four foot sheet of uh, half inch birch. And it takes like five minutes 
uh, with that Jenny compression bit to rip those things out and cut the bases out. And then I take a real, uh, an old piece. I got some old eighth inch Luan down here that I don't use for nothing else. Take a piece of it, put it in the enclosure, tape it to the honeycomb so it can't move. And then I just do the outline, burn it into the, into the Luan. And then I just line them up, go, line them up, go. And each one of them takes probably about an hour because I've got it running real high LPI to get good definition. And it's a lot of stuff on that engrave. And, uh, but they're, they're turned out good. And, uh, like I said, I pro you know, material cost is the biggest thing. Cause you know, the half inch birch isn't, isn't cheap, but I just didn't feel like quarter inch Luan was going to be sufficient yeah. for that. So I went yeah. with half inch. Yeah. Well, for things like that, you know, you want it to be, uh, appropriate quality and then the price of them should reflect the cost of materials. So. Well, the first person that wanted one sent me a picture from Etsy. And in that picture, it was a piece of half-inch birch. So I'm like, uh, yeah, I got some of that plywood I could do it with. And she's like, that's what I want. And then everybody after that's just been like, I want one just like this, but with this logo. Just like this, but, you know. So, so I, that's what I went with to start with, and that's what I'm doing. Uh, no, Sharon, the eighth-inch stuff, I use it a lot of times for fit testing, like when I build my jigs and stuff. I got this stuff really cheap a while back when I was doing the ceiling in the shop and I actually got like nine sheets too much. And so I kept it because it's good for prototyping, making sure things fit together and snap together. Uh, instead of using the quarter inch material, which is a little more expensive, I could use that. And it's, it, I'm not out as much money uh, for my R and D for a file that I'm building or whatever. So mm -hmm. it just saves me a little bit of money. Yeah. It's always good to have some quarter inch stock on hand for, you know, making a quick box, shop box, or making a jig for something. So yeah. I, I, uh, you know, I, even though some of the stuff doesn't laser very well or cut very well, I've, I've often, uh, grabbed some of that less expensive stuff, whether it's at home Depot, Lowe's or Menards, just to, just to have some on hand for that kind of thing. Yeah. I got, I got, uh, the box that this toolbox over here. No, what was toolbox? What was it? Oh, my wife's new refrigerator. I cut that cardboard up into panels. <laughs> I've got yeah. it out in the kiln in case I need a big nice. piece of, like a six foot tall piece of cardboard. Nice. Uh, somebody's asking about the springs on my enclosure. I don't know the exact measurements. I tried my best to match them up and put a link in that video, but they're almost, I think they're like, might be like eight and a half inch long when they're uh when they're when they're compressed uh but it's the weight the the, the pull is more what you need to be concerned with because you can always space out uh your fulcrum and your point of contact it's how much weight they pull because you don't want it to be so much that you can't open it but you don't want it to be so little that when you stand the lid up if it does try to come back this way it's just gonna let it fall over uh, because that's not good but the way i the, my spring system the way it works it holds the lid open and it also holds it closed because it, it basically, when that spring reaches that, that max tension and then it pulls it back this way or it reaches max mm -hmm. and goes back that way. This is a weird design. It's, it's a lot of redneck engineering went into that. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, I've seen that used on, on a variety of things, you know, the spring fulcrum bit. So yeah, it works. <laughs> and Hey, if you get it a little strong, just consider it part of your, uh, your cardio workout, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah, Brandy comes in here and she she grabs and closes her zilla and she's like, <laughs> she's like, I don't know how you open that with one hand. Like, that may be why I had to have back surgery opening that enclosure. So much. <laughs> there it is. That's where it's at. So, but uh, <clears throat> well, William's asking uh, if anyone's heard when Lightburn will have the CNC version. And uh, last fall they were saying Q1, but that has come and gone. We're now into April, so. Uh, I'll be honest. I haven't uh, haven't poked around at that recently. I've been really preoccupied. I haven't even really gotten enough shop time uh, to do do too much out here. Um, so, have you heard uh, anything new on that? No, I've been out of the loop. Like I said, I've been staying so busy. I haven't. My, what researching time I have had, I've been researching stuff for the CNC epoxy and all, all that. Uh, so my research hours, while limited have been directed at new stuff. So I haven't, I haven't followed up on it. So 
hopefully, I mean, I, I know a number of us are excited to see what it looks like, how it is, well, you know, what the pricing is and such. But uh, yeah, haven't heard much on it recently. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's still in progress and uh, we'll we'll see something from it. But at the same time, I I want them to get it right. You know, um, doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, you know, get get enough of it working so that it feels uh, like a a legit piece of software. Because we, I, I mean, both you and I have played with a lot of different control softwares, and some of them you're just kind of like, okay, this is frustrating to use because of maybe limitations or broken tools and such. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love Lightburn. <laughs> like I said, I, I even catch myself, even though VCarve has a lot of the same features, I catch myself a lot of times going, you know what, this will be a lot quicker if I can just build it in Lightburn and send the shoot the SVG or the DXF over into VCarve. Uh, because I'm just, that's just where I'm comfortable. Uh, now, on the same note, I'm hoping that they draw some of the characteristics from VCarve as far as like the tool library and stuff like that. I'm hoping maybe they'll make it to where you can import VCarve or, you know, all the different softwares, uh, tool files, uh, tool path settings and everything. And if they do that, that'll make it really easy. So you don't have to go back and manually input everything. Uh, which I, I wouldn't think that would be very hard because most of them just use a CSV file mm -hmm. and, uh, and it, you know, been able to export what I've got built up in VCarve and just send it straight over into Lightburn would be, that would be the way to go. So we'll see. Uh, I do know that like the Spoko, if I put a laser module on it, I can run it with Lightburn, but I have not fooled with that. Uh, I, I just I don't have a need really for a laser module on it. Yeah, I mean the only need that I would see is if you were for some reason needing to laser engrave something just that big, you know. Yeah. And I I I can't think of the reason because <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times you can, you know, you can engrave with various bits with the CNC and then you can, you know, you can paint or stain them different colors and such. So I can understand when that's, you know, you've got one machine, you only have space for one machine, you know, making it a dual purpose setup. But uh, I, I, uh, I've i played around with a lot of uh, multi, multi-use multi machines, you know, the Swiss Army machines. It can do 3D printing, it can do CNC cutting, it can do vinyl, yeah. you know, knife cutting uh, and all that stuff. And it, it usually does one thing really well, a couple things okay, and one thing you're like, yeah, it can do it, but it's not great at it. So, um, I, you know, when possible, it's and and when when you're really using something a lot, it's nice to have that dedicated machine that it's built to do that that specific purpose. So, there's your one. I knew that one was coming. <laughs> um, have I thought of it? Oh yeah, yeah. I've I've thought of it. Um, I, I I've just been busy. You know, I wanted to get through the pain of paying taxes this year. Um, I've got, uh, I, I've been really busy at work um, the past, I don't know, it seems pretty much since the start of the year, we've got a big project going on and had uh, had my boss take another job. So I'm filling in for some of their duties and such. So I just haven't had enough time to get caught up out here. Um, Cause I do want to, I, I kind of want to get a few more things out on it as more of the, the stock setup before going through the upgrade. Um, so it's, it's a little more current comparison between the two. So, yeah. Uh, ET is saying, what is the minimum height from the camera to the laser bed? Uh, can I go and still get the out of stack camera to work? ET, that's going to be directly, uh, related to the size of the work area. So the bigger the work area, of course, the higher you're going to have to be to encompass that work area. I recommend go as low to the workspace as you can. And still see all the, and still see the entire work area, and then wherever that wherever that is, set it right there, lock it in, and uh, set everything up. Uh, that would that would be my my recommendation, because uh, I'm hoping that you have a square work area, because the Atom Stack camera, which is actually what's on my overhead table, well, it is not working uh, for some reason. Oh, probably because Lightburn picked it up, but. It uh, it's more of a square image, so you're definitely, you know, you're you're gonna want to pull that down to where you can see the entire workspace. 
because it's not a uh, it's not a fish eye. It's a flat lens. Oh, I don't forgot what the angle yeah. is, but it's it's not real steep. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty shallow, uh, and and I wanted to say, I think I was around fourteen to sixteen inches with that one on the Adam Stack square frame. That's roughly four hundred by four hundred. Um, so, you know, you're going to be in that ballpark with that camera unless you're cutting down your area or, you know, in a bigger bigger setup, but. Yeah. All right. Uh, have you ever had the thirty eighteen? I had the thirty thirty. I did not have the thirty eighteen. Uh, I haven't seen what it looks like. Oh, uh, I I did start, of course, with the forty forty pro. Uh, and understand that those little CNCs are going to have limitations. Yeah, that's a that's the the, the older. 3018 Pro, so that's the that's the predecessor to the 3030 and all the rest of them. It's like it's a bed slinger. But uh, depending on what you plan on doing with it, you will you can learn the fundamentals with those machines. But you're going to have a very uh, small work area and very limited as far as what you can do and what amount of time you can do it. Uh, that was the biggest thing that I learned going from the 3030 and the 4040 up to the 6050. Now, once you get up to the 6050, it's you can effectively make things in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, the 4040 and the 3030, you had to keep it small or else it would take hours uh, to complete the job. So, what do you think? I see. I know you're looking at it. <laughs> yeah. No. That's. Uh, I was just kind of browsing through a few of the other one. I mean, the nice appealing bit to it is it's cheap. You know, you yeah. really don't have a lot into it. So like you say, I, you're going to learn the fundamentals to it. But um, I've never actually run, uh, you know, one of the bed slinging. I've always had the moving gantry on all my machines. Um, so I don't I can't really speak to that part of it. Um, the 3030 was that way. And it, it it took some getting used to. Because yeah. You're, you're especially coming from lasers because I'm so used to the bed staying still. Uh, mm -hmm. It took a little getting used to. It worked, but it it, it was definitely uh, a learning curve as far as just getting used to seeing it moving. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I still stand by if, if a person can swing it, try to get into like the 4040. Uh, and they've got the Reno, which is like the, the budget version of it. Um, saves you about $150. Um, James Dean did a decent overview of that one. And, you know, he, he kind of had some opinions on it as far as, you know, if you're going to go with the Reno, just, you know, see if you can step up to the 4040 Pro. But, you know, now you're talking something about three to four times the price. So, I don't know. Yeah. Jeff said that uh, his with his journey going from the 3018 up, uh, is that the 6060 has finally paid for all of his, all of his purchases. <laughs> The sixty sixty, oh uh, so yeah, yeah they they have a sixty. They have, was it a sixty thirty, and you can upgrade it to the sixty sixty. I mm -hmm. think that's how it works. But, but yeah, the sixty fifty felt and ran very strong compared to what I was used to with the forty forty and the thirty thirty. Uh, with that with that uh, Makita router on it, it was it was pretty decent. I actually would have liked to have seen what it was like with a 65 millimeter spindle on it because now that I've gotten used to this machine, it's crazy how, how much more powerful a spindle is than those routers. So, uh, question from Rick, uh, asked a few weeks ago about safety glasses for the S1 and the F1. Will the same glasses work for both? Not necessarily, uh, but you can get a set that will. Um, matter of fact, I have them back here. So, Free Mascot makes a pair, and I think they're like the version 6 or something like that, or Style 6. There's a couple of them that will list both the 190 to 550 as well as 800 to 1100 nanometer wavelength. And that's, you'll see it, I don't know if I can get my camera to focus on it, but right up at that top edge is where it has that marking. And that's really what you're looking for on any laser glasses is that they they're, they're yep. uh, etched right on there, um, 
And yeah. so a lot of them are just rated for like the that 550-ish range. Um, but but these pair uh, actually cover both spectrums. Now they're not going to cover for a CO2. That's a, a whole nother wavelength. But for your blue diode and your IR modules, uh, both on the F1 or the, the standalone ones, uh, this is a set that will do both. And they're about 40 to $50 on Amazon. Yeah, these are these. I just finally found a pair of these. These are the same lens rating as what you've got, but yeah. they're in this this size or this field or whatever. Of course, if you want one of for each, then here's the free mascots for blue diode and our. So I've got, and I had another pair, and I'm, I'm thinking one of my guests has wore them home because I, I have one more pair of green ones and I can't find them nowhere. I don't know where they went to. Uh, so. I don't know if they're at Klein's house or maybe even a customer. I'm not sure, but they're gone. But they were the ones that came with the uh, the uh, com marker. Oh yeah. So, yeah, I really don't miss them because they didn't have much tint at all to them. Uh, Jeff said now they have the thousand by thousand upgrade for the sixty sixty. That would <laughs> uh, that'd be a pretty good size machine there. I feel like you'd be rebuilding was... most of the machine at that point. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it, it does seem like you, you're pretty much changing out everything. Yeah, yeah, every, I mean, you have your side side plates and, you know, your steppers and such, but you're going to have all new rails, both X, Y, and, yeah, I guess you'd still have your Z, Z gantry, but. <clears throat> Let's see. Hey, we're knocking out welcome. work and doing a lot tonight. Welcome, Lumberyard, Lumberyard Legends from Windy, Wyoming. Uh, I, I feel you on the wind the past few days. It has been something else up here, in the, at least the northern part of the, the country. Um, we had, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, I, they had red flag warnings out for us because it's been so dry. Of course, it rained today, so that's great. But, yeah, we had we had uh, sustained winds in the 30s and gusts above 40. So Yeah, it's been steadily warming back up here uh, since the tornado. Uh, it got a little cool for the couple of days after the tornado went through. Yeah. Let's so here. Well, Brad is asking, what's the latest news on the Atom Stack A70? And uh, the good news is. <laughs> They're in the U.S. Um, uh, let me actually double check, but they, they are, I believe, out. They're on their way to each of us. And yeah, I was uh, say, let me let me check let me check my tracking number before I lie about it. <laughs> we'll see. Now, my my concern is I'm starting to run out of time before I head south. It's easier uh, on the phone. Hang on, let me pull my phone up here. Because for some yeah, reason we, it's not clickable in the mail in mother mail. All right, so so for me it's showing as uh, should be here on Wednesday. Yes, yeah, so say I was one day behind you. I guess it's because you're closer to the west coast or whatever. Uh, but mine is saying that it'll be here uh, Thursday. So so oh. if nothing else, maybe you can uh, you can come down and like you know maybe you could just knock your review out here at the house. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just throw the laser in the van, and uh, <clears throat> give myself even more packing headaches on the way home with an assembled laser. But um, I'm trying to find, trying but no, they're, they, they, they are finally on the way, and um, so we're excited to get those and test them out, and hopefully I can at least get an initial something knocked out before I head down to Clax, and then he'll have his, and maybe we can do more, more fun testing. Okay, I finally found them. What'd you find? Uh, somebody was asking for a link for the glasses. Oh, uh, I could put that in there. <laughs> it's that. Uh, <clears throat> That's the style that I have. The cooler style. Mine are not as cool, but they do fit <laughs> over my glasses. So if you if you wear prescription glasses, you may want to get the ones that Steve wears. Uh, if not, if you want to look cool, you can get a pair of these. <laughs> <laughs> but 
these actually will work. So like if you work with blue diodes and you work with IRs in your shop a lot, this this does it this minimizes the risk of you got your orange glasses on and you think that you have your other ones on and you work with the IR. Uh, cause this is what I used to wear, but now it's just as easy to wear these that way, no matter which machine I grab, you know, I'm good because you can't, you can't open the P2 while it's running. So I don't have to worry about mm -hmm. that. Uh, because it'll, it, it, it'll just, you just pull on it and nothing happens. So I like this option better just because of that, because I do have IRs and I do have uh blue diodes. So it's just kind of one, one size fits all. So, well, and, and, uh, these no, are Jim, actually the, they will not. the first these are the first set i bought uh just because of the the frame size looked like they would fit over my glasses so that was uh that was kind of dumb luck that it worked with both the the blue diode and the ir now who looks weird if you want to watch the eclipse this is this is what you need this is a uh, 12 darkness uh welding lens yeah I can, I, I can barely see the white parts of the tv i, I won't so. have that problem <laughs> well, my it, daughter my daughter it, asked to borrow it so she's like dad can i borrow your welding stuff so that i can uh, watch the eclipse but now if you need to see what you're doing you can always just uh always just flip that up <laughs> yeah. uh unfortunately i i think you know up up in our area they're they're calling for i think about a 70 percent uh, uh, occlusion or whatever, but uh, we're probably going to be cloudy anyway, so <laughs> it's just going to get a little darker. Yeah, but now if you have a if you have a welding helmet or whatever, as long as what I've read is it needs to be more than a twelve uh, number twelve darkness or whatever. Uh, and like my solar powered hood that I got, I haven't checked it, but I just grabbed those out because it's a fixed lens and there's no danger of it not being charged and then look at it but i think my oldest daughter and my wife one wound up finding some glasses made for that somewhere but anyway nice that's that's mine for when, when it comes through i can watch it i can wear those <laughs> but yeah i started to make a, i started to make a laser cut holder for the lens but i was afraid i'd drop my lens and break it mm. yeah so i just left it in there yeah well, well, we'll see. Maybe the clouds will break up a bit, but we won't have a full full eclipse either way. So, uh, John, <laughs> not with a laser. I have it. Uh, I grew up in a garage, so we had rolls of gasket maker paper, but I haven't ever tried it with a laser. I have done it with just you know tapping it with a hammer and taking a pair of scissors and cutting them out, but never with a laser. Apparently, Steve has. So I actually have, and I don't have any examples of it. But yeah, this is the, the hard part. Is it comes rolled up, and you got to keep it flat. But um, yeah. I've actually made these for small uh, two-stroke engines for my RC hobby, and so basically, I took the old one, traced it out, uh, brought it into uh, light burn, and then um, cut through that uh, material, and that was on my CO2. But uh, it does it does work pretty well. Hey, what do you think about having this guy on our live next week? I've been talking to him through email and messengers. And I, I was going to bring it up, but I haven't talked to you this week because I've been so busy. But what do y'all think? What's everybody in the audience think? Should we, should we, should we bring him on? What's, what, what are we going to make him teach us to do? <laughs> I've been watching a lot of his inlays and his epoxy videos and stuff and uh, trying to master my skills over here. So far, I'm not doing real well. Well, sounds like maybe... <laughs> maybe uh... Maybe we can get some good tips on epoxy inlays then. Yeah. So what do y'all think, y'all? Y'all drop a comment if y'all think we, we, we should. Cause I, I think it's a good idea. Because uh, that next Sunday, you're still going to be at home then, right? Uh, yeah. Next Sunday, the 14th, I'll be at home. Yeah. I didn't want to wait until it was going to be the Sunday that you're going to be down here because I figured we'll have all, right. all kinds of stuff going on. So, uh, so yeah. I think, I think uh, we'll be good uh, next week. I think that would be the best time for it. So, uh, so yeah, so we'll get him in here and he can, he can, he can teach us how to do, uh, <laughs> epoxy and this stuff. Yeah. I, I feel that comment. I, I know a little bit. <laughs> I know a little about a lot. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, uh, so yeah, go ahead and put that on your calendar if you're if you're clear. Uh, but yeah, we, me and him were messaging a couple of nights ago. Like I said, I'd almost forgot about setting the live for this week because uh, I've been. It's just been crazy. It's been busy. I know you've been busy. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. So I think I think next week we'll we'll do that. So I'll go I'll go try to snag the most embarrassing photo I can off of his YouTube page. <laughs> <laughs> and put him in the thumbnail for next week. Throw it in there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh. Yeah, it'll, it'll give me a little bit of a breather so I can I can do some packing. I'll just listen. <laughs> I'll be back here yeah. loading stuff up. <laughs> uh, E.T., that little machine, like I said, it's not a terrible machine. Uh, I, I had a little bit of problem with the first one that I got with a loose screw. Uh but it was one of the screws that hold the thing together and basically they just didn't whoever put it in didn't put any uh thread locker on it or anything but other than that it it does well for what it costs uh it's you know it's not it's it's, it's not a laser matic as far as the engineering goes but it is stable enough to be functional the laser, I will say the little 10 watt module that it comes with is pretty hot for a 10 watt. And the length of focus on that little module is forgiving enough that if you focus it like say a millimeter high, even if there is any kind of sway in the machine, you won't see it in the engraver in the cut. But the one I've got, uh, I hadn't had any problems out of that part of it. It works with light burn great, just like all the other Sculpt Fun machines. I've actually considered trying to engineer myself a way of holding uh, a rotary or chuck underneath it and trying to make it, you know, just a little uh, rotary box. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not something with, with the laser matic, as long as, as long as I've got it sitting here, it's not something I really want to go Frankenstein in a machine to make it do uh, tumblers like that. So, but yeah, all right. Everybody says bring him on. So I guess we'll, uh, <laughs> I guess we'll bring him in here. So that'll be next Sunday. So if you're here uh, and you want to see, I don't know what kind of surprises he'll have, but uh, but we'll we'll have him in here uh, next Sunday. And then the following Sunday, you're actually going to be on on location at the shack, right? Yep. <laughs> if if everything goes as planned. Yep. Uh, he is going to be camping at the Clack Shack. Uh, I've got him a camper lined up. We'll be setting it up out here in the front. I'm probably going to try to at least put it at like a 30 degree angle <laughs> so that oh, thanks. So, so that he just rolls when he walks in the door uh i may i may level it we'll see uh but we're gonna have steve's gonna be camping at the shack and, and that's got to be a video we're gonna have to make a video of that <laughs> but he'll be right next off. he'll be right next to the cows and i'm gonna try my best <laughs> to get the cows in the middle of the night to come right up to the fence and just be like Murr. well uh, well, I I have some new headphones and some new uh, <laughs> new earbuds coming, so we'll 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 see. They're both active noise canceling as well. So, hey, it's it's not very noisy over here unless it's animals. Yeah, you may actually need to bring a noise machine with you if you're used to like the hustle and bustle of a big city, because at night it's just going to be crickets, it's insects, and animals is all you're going to hear occasionally. Uh -huh. The you know jacked up four wheel drive comes by, but not often. So it sounds sounds basically like my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Greg. <laughs> Greg, what what machine do you have? You got an MK two? Is that uh? Is that what I'm? I'm guessing you have the new. Is it, well, I guess it matters if it's a 30 watt or not. Hang on a second. Let me look at something. I've been see. I've been talking with Greg about this or messaging with him, and apparently he's having some issues. So I think I know an easy way to fix these issues. Give me just a second. <laughs> just turn up the CPAP. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's an option if you have one. Not yet. No, I don't have one yet. But no, I uh, usually once I'm asleep, I'm out pretty, pretty solid. 
So. All right, let me export this. Oh my goodness, I got a stink bug flying around in here. That ain't good. Let me export this file for him. Now, do you get uh, do you get alerts at night on your little pr proximity thing? Mm -hmm. Do they wake you up? Sometimes, but okay. I also have a two seventy five pound German Shepherds. They'll wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll, they'll okay. let you know so bring bring some beef jerky <laughs> <laughs> they'll let you know uh but yeah the dogs the dogs have not uh they usually they usually do that night watch uh but yeah if they if they sound the alarm you know we just handle it while you're doing it's that a I'm gonna... it's a team effort yeah, I'm trying to get this. I'm, I'm going to let him have my, uh, the actually I am exporting what I'm doing here, uh, is I'm exporting the working light burn setup file for that machine that is running over my shoulder right there. And I'm going to send this to you so that, uh, you can just download my configuration file. And if it still does it, uh, I don't know, maybe there's a wire crossed. Uh, but, but cause this one, you can see that as this one back here is running just fine. And let's see, that's the four max, blah, 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 Rosie laser. Okay. Let me get this copy link. So Jer's asking if there's a Facebook page to, uh, show stuff they're working on and see what others are working on. We actually do have a, a laser engraver community group. That's kind of focused around our, our, uh, combined audience. Uh, and so there should be links down below each description, whether you're on Facebook or, or YouTube, that uh, will link you to that group. And uh, that's a good place to share uh, share projects you're working on, questions you're having. Um, we try to check in as often as we can. Uh, past couple of weeks, we've both been pretty busy, so it's been a little hard. But uh, other people in there, very helpful and also sharing things as well. So. Um, encourage if you're if you're on facebook it's a good community to join we try to keep a bit of the spammy bots out that uh like to try to get you to design or have them design a logo for you or or give away free things that someone you know someone bought and they just can't stand to have it anymore all those red flags so we try to clear those out but um uh, get a lot of people sharing uh, sharing their ideas and and asking their questions so definitely check that out yeah, I've started getting them commenting on my, my my videos and stuff on my Facebook page. It is annoying. Uh, mm -hmm. Greg, if you're still here, fella, uh, if you'll click that link right there, that'll take you to uh, Google Drive. You can download the configuration file that I'm running on this machine right here at this time. I just backed it up, made me a clean backup of it, uh, and shared that out to you. And download that. And when you go to add the machine, instead of adding it manually, just use the import function or uh, create from, is it create from file or import, whichever function, whichever the button says. Uh, let me look, make sure. Uh, <coughs> import, the button says import. So what you'll do is open up Lightburn, hit import, and then direct it to that file location where you save that file at and it'll add it and it'll be set up just like mine with the frame in and every, everything will be the way it needs to be. So, and I don't, I, the MK2, I remember uh, Leo saying the other day that the 20 watt and the 30 watt use the same controller. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't be any different. <laughs> oh, those little, yeah. those little things don't want to fall out of the hole. There you go. So, if you people have, if anybody has questions, um, throw them in there. You know, we try to answer them, much as uh, Clack just did with the. Uh, careful there. <laughs> yeah. Clack just did with the uh, machine config file. Um, we try to get people running. That's it's a thing that both Clack and I like to do is help people out and. Uh, whether it's in the comments of our videos in the Facebook group or here on our lives. So um, ask away um, about uh, your machines or about projects or about business. We'll, we'll try to answer them. 
uh, as best we can. Otherwise, we end up talking about the weather and random stuff. Yeah, we'll be talking about chicken livers and cows. Y'all don't watch it. <laughs> <clears throat> Not sure I'm following. My 48 by 48 enclosure, I put table legs on the base with those screw on things from Lowe's. <laughs> I was trying to hook up my exhaust system, scooting the base around. Not understanding completely there, V. I'm missing something. Uh, well, I've, I've seen, I don't know if, if it's the same thing. I've seen some of the, uh, they're, they're like a workbench kit and they're for two by fours. And then they kind of have the corner pieces that you, you basically just oh, okay. screw into each other. Maybe that's what, what she's using. And, you know, I could see if a leg got twisted too much, it could oh. pull on those screws. But Yeah, apparently it folded up. <clears throat> apparently it folded up on her. So yeah. we're going to have to go back with some 45 bracing. <laughs> yeah, that's why if you look at my CNC table over there, that thing's 45 braced left and right, and it is built bulky. Uh, because I, I was afraid that with all that weight that my legs on it might fold up if I didn't build it properly. Uh, Tammy's got a question about acrylic. Uh, I'm having a hard time finding four millimeter acrylic for LED light bases other than on Amazon. Wondering if it even exists. Where do we buy our acrylic? Now you have your uh, your buddy with the sign. What is it? Mm -hmm. uh, the engraving shop? Yeah, I, <clears throat> I snag a lot. If I need anything big, I get it from him. Uh, I do buy some on Amazon for small stuff. And then, of course, X Tool has gave me a couple of boxes of their stuff to try out. Uh, but yeah, if I need a piece that's you know bigger than twelve by twelve or whatever, I just I got a friend in town that orders it in four by eight sheets, and I can go by his shop and he'll cut me off a piece whatever side I need. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Greg. Greg's saying that it only mirrors uh, when he brings in a file that's saved as a JPEG but traced in Lightburn. That sounds like that's going to be something to do with the origin, like it used to when you would bring an X-Tool file in. If, I, I don't know. If it's only doing it with certain files, then it's definitely going to be something in that file. Uh, check make sure it's not changing your origin when you bring those files in or something, because that's the only thing I could think of. Yeah. Um, but going back to the acrylic question, um, you know, if you have a local sign shop, you might want to reach out to them because sometimes they'll either offer you their scraps um, for free or cheap, or they might be able to sell you some, you know, off their order. And, and the hardwood dealers are like this too. If you're if they're placing an order for lumber and and uh, plywood, and you've got maybe a specialty thing, sometimes adding it onto theirs helps them and helps you. So it helps to reach out to these places. Otherwise, um, there are some places such as ePlastics online where you could reach out to and see what they have. Um, they have a lot of different thicknesses um, that might get close to that, and then they, they offer them in different sizes. So um, I'm not saying it's going to be any more affordable than Amazon or not, but it might be a place to look. So, But, uh, yeah, I, I generally uh, – I've got a couple people that – work in a uh, sign related business here in town too. So if I've got something weird, I'm, I'm usually able to reach out to them for some stuff too. Yeah. Uh, Phobos is asking how long can the rolling 30 watt run at hundred percent power while cutting without overheating? I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't, I've never had any machine overheat and y'all see, I've been running this guy slamming it for the past, what hour and, or right at an hour. Well, I started right before the live, so probably about an hour. Uh, my X40, I've been running it all day because I was cutting these things out four at a time on it. Uh, but it's a little noisy with the, the flap that I put in there for exhaust. It'll sit there and ting, 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 ting. So I decided to just, while we were doing the live, I'd just do them one at a time on that machine because when I fire this guy up, like with four of them in there, uh, it takes it takes like a couple of hours because I'm running this thing at like 150 LPI. Uh, and it's just, it, it's, it's mm -hmm. an insane amount. Of, it's an insane amount of detail. And you can see the, you can see all the detail and everything that's in that. So that takes, that takes a minute. Oh, uh, yeah. 
I've done a whole bunch of them. I don't know if y'all can see them all over there, but I've, I've been doing those most of, most of the day today. So Jim's wanting you to talk about engraving glass with the 30 watt Roly Rotary. And I say you because you have one. <laughs> I haven't messed with glass with it. I try to stay away from glass because glass is one of those things that one, it's you could frost it. I've got you know mason jars, wine glasses, and stuff over there that I've done, but I don't get a lot of requests for it, and it is very finicky, especially from machine to machine. You've got to go through a whole bunch of testing uh, because if you over engrave glass, it will shatter. Like it'll either shatter while it's engraving, or it'll shatter as soon as you pick it up and run it under the water uh, because it you're actually causing little tiny microscopic chips in that glass and i've had a lot of them that i've engraved them man man it looks good and i pick it up and go to wipe it off and it just crumble uh especially wine glasses and it seems the more expensive the wine glass the easier they crumble uh the yeah. cheaper ones tend to stay together better oh uh, matter of fact hang on <laughs> He's digging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I got it. so many. I got. I, I had to go over and dig through my test materials. I see that was a uh, that was an Adam. I think that was a X tool, maybe. I don't know. It could have been a Comgro. Uh, but that's with Surmark. I do prefer the look of Surmark because you don't have to go near as deep. And if you heat that glass up, it actually mixes in with the uh, glass and will make it kind of a gray tone. Uh, and so here's a wine glass. And some of these are without Surmark and some are with Surmark. It, it just depends. Uh, but as you can see, I finally got it. I finally got it right, right there. Uh, but I bought like this is a this is a, like a Dollar Tree wine glass. <laughs> I bought some at Walmart <laughs> and shattered every one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wish you could see, but it's kind of hard to see. But there's little tiny some of the places where I engraved it. There's little tiny set and little tiny chips. Let me grab another one. I got another one over here too. Woo! And it's dusty here in the shack. We clean this off we don't see it so like that one right there i use sir mark on that and it did a pretty decent job uh, as long as whatever you got it's not dark but if you look real careful right there at the top of that h there's a little tiny crack in that glass and it didn't fall apart but you can like if you turn the light just right you can see it refracting the light and there's a crack there uh, that's just a frosted Clack Shack logo, but if I'm going to do glass, I like doing these guys. You can't hardly break these. You've got to really, you've got to really go into them to break these. Uh, another one is shot glasses. They're tough to break. Shot glasses, uh, they, they, you, you, because of metal, the glass is thicker, they're a lot more forgiving uh, when it comes to breaking them. So... Let me, uh, let me go put all this fragile stuff back over in the corner. So one of the things that I want to play with at some point is uh, basically creating nucleation points. And so that's where you put the, the engraving on the inside of the glass and you do it for like beer glasses. And it causes kind of the carbonation to interact with that, that texture. And it kind of makes bubbles rise from those things. So, um, one of these days, I'm going to go get myself a, a box of inexpensive uh, beer pints or something like that and do a little playing around with that, see if see how uh, how that might work out. So Now, I will say this. If you want to do something fun, something that you really can't tear up and that's something you can do in a rotary, get yourself some terracotta pots. These things are fun uh, because it makes, like, you don't have to mark them or nothing. It turns the uh, material to that dark gray, 
Uh, and you can put like like this. I just kind of like was, this was a practice. I did some uh, little pots, and I wanted like a decoration around the top of them. So this was my practice one. But terracotta is fun. It's cheap. You can buy these things at like almost anywhere for a little of nothing, and it don't matter how hard you hit them. They I haven't I haven't broken one of these on the laser. Now I've dropped a few, but I haven't broken one on the laser. Uh, so. So, but these are these are fun, and it, it, it does a really it's hard to see it, but it does a really good job of taking uh, text and engraving and stuff like that. Shading, if you're trying to do a photo, not so much, but logos and stuff, it works really well. I guess since it's spring and people are planting flowers, I, sh I should probably revisit this. I think I've got some mm -hmm. more of them over there. I got some salt and pepper shakers. I got me a couple of uh, glass bricks over there. I got all kinds of stuff over there. I'm bad to be like, just grab stuff and stick it in a buggy when I'm shopping and be like, oh, I might need that for a video one day. Show and tell time with clack, it seems. Well, I got I got test materials. That whole shelf to the right of Enclosure Zilla is like the bottom two is nothing but test materials. So. Well, I mean, the only thing I've got to show off It's nothing new, but uh -oh. I was impressed. What? I was just waiting. The uh -oh. suspense is getting <laughs> You said, uh-oh. I'm like, what? Uh, so this is a, you know, your typical tumbler, stainless steel tumbler. Um, but it came out very clean. Let's see if I can get it to focus without being too bad. Uh, very clean. And this was done with a simple little 5-watt laser pecker unit on their rotary. So A 5-watt a five what? A 5-watt. A five watt Galvo laser by a company that combines two words together that you think are funny. <laughs> um, oh. But this, this, uh, you know, this came out really well uh, for, you know, just a five watt on this blue color, too. Sometimes those can be yeah. a bit tricky. So um, I was, I was impressed that I, I was figuring this is going to be my scrap one, the test, and, uh, and it actually came out really well. So, yeah, you don't need a seventy watt atom stack to do that. <laughs> now I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of people, I find that a lot of people have better luck with the lower power machines doing tumblers because with the bigger machines, the client ran into this the other day. If you if you run too much power, you start nope. staining the stainless. But if your machine has just enough power to get the coating off of it, there's not any risk of actually marking it because because that's actually just done on bare stainless. And that's uh -huh. permanent. That, that don't come off. And so if you run too much power and you're trying to do a tumbler, you're going to get that gray underneath there. Uh, yep. Whereas if you don't have enough power to do that, then uh, the danger is not there. Yeah, and so uh, this will be in my video. I'm, I've been editing it today, and hopefully it'll get out tomorrow. But when it came off the rotary, this was pretty dark. You know, I wasn't sure it actually gotten through the, <laughs> the coating. But uh, quick little work with some Windex and a... Uh, and, uh, the uh, magic eraser pad and it's shined right up. So um, really, nope. really impressed with that. So we'll see, um, see if I can get my editing done on that one. Uh, Greg, you, if you have Adobe Illustrator, you can bring AI files into Lightburn. Uh, but for the most part, you're probably gonna, if you're doing graphics and logos and stuff like that, PNGs are, are, are easy. Uh, but if you can if you can export as an AI file, you can bring that in uh, also, and it'll actually retain more of the lines and stuff. But I usually just snag minus PNGs and go with it. Yeah, I mean if you're working in Photoshop, that's uh, that's more of a raster editing and such. So that's that's definitely going to be you know PNG or JPEG territory there. Mm -hmm. I like PNGs myself. I don't like dealing with JPEGs because PNGs just seem easier to trace to me than a JPEG, unless you do like a transparent background JPEG or whatever, which usually in my Adobe, it makes you export those as PNGs. Oh, I had to upgrade to uh, the better uh, editing software. 
So oh, instead really? of Premier, yeah, instead of Premier Rush, now I actually have Premier Pro. Yeah, because I started using GoPros, and I started using my glasses, and I started using all these other cameras and the editing software before I'd have to convert them and then save them and move them. And I, mm. so I was like, you know what? I'm spending hours. I got to figuring it up. I was spending about three or four hours a week moving video and transferring it from one format to the other. And I'm like, by the time I take that time away from doing other things, it's costing me money. I'd be better off just to pay for the software. So I sure. had to upgrade. Uh, now I can just drag them straight off the SD card from the GoPro and straight up into uh, uh, Premiere. So it's made my life a lot better. Yeah, I mean, I have access to that as well. Um, but uh, Rush has been, it, it, it's not as convoluted. So it's been easy to use. But there are well, times I find myself going, <clears throat> meh. So. Well, let me take that back. It's not, it's, I upgraded my Rush. I had to get the, uh, what do you call it? Crap. I'm still using Rush. But I had to get the Adobe Pro is it Adobe Pro Online or something like that in order to get the codec to allow mm. me to use those other files? That's what it was. Okay. It's not. Gotcha. It went from it went from thirty something dollars a month to like fifty. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that hurt. But I got to figure it up. the The time loss was taking more money than what it's going to cost me. Uh, yeah, I I actually love the LA Awesome Cleaner and use it a lot, but. I just happened to not have it out here in the garage, so I was Ooh, just using close. standard Windex, and uh, that uh, that worked okay, just with a little extra boom from the from the uh, Magic Eraser pads. But no, that's a good tip. I, I love that stuff for cleaning a lot of the gunk off lasers as well. So, So Sharon's asking on the terracotta pots, can you uh, put an image just on the front without a rotary? And depending on the size of the pot and the curve, you'd be able to get it by with a a certain degree of doing that. <laughs> it, it's yeah, it's going to depend on the curvature uh, and yeah. how big of an image you're talking. If, if you're talking something the size of a quarter, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, the smaller, the steeper the curve. So you're going to be out of focus a little bit. Uh, but... But yeah, you can, uh, if you got a bigger one and you had a smaller graphic, I think that would, you can make it work. For sure. So Steve's asking, uh, has heard mention of tiling on a CNC, is this a hard process? And uh, no, it's not terribly difficult you need to kind of set up your machine to have some registration points so um uh, the most common way is you'll have maybe two points that you will like peg into maybe with screws or something you'll do the first half of it and then you'll loosen that sheet up and then you'll reference those peg points for your next two to get them in into a known spot and then you'll start the second part of your job um, some people can also do this with, you know, if you have a fixed rail that's going to hold your zero uh, in one axis, then you can slide that along it. And then you just need to know that you move it X amount uh, and get that exactly. So it's, it's easiest by using some like some fixed point pegs that'll that'll uh, be uh, it, absolutely immovable and they're in line with the axis. But um, it just breaks up the job into tiles, and then you just need to know that you can move your material exactly that distance and then start the next job. So. Well, hello, Mr. Dennis. Oh, there's your question about your LP. <laughs> uh, so I've got the laser pecker, too. And no, it does not work with Lightburn. They do have decent software. So it connects Bluetooth to your phone or a tablet. And they have two different versions. There's a, a very basic one, but they have their, uh, they call it Design Studio. And that allows you to import more things, work with STLs or uh, SVGs a little bit easier. They also have the equivalent on, uh, on desktop, um, I believe for both Windows and Mac. And it actually replicates the design studio from the tablet pretty well. And 
I, I would I would call it like a light burn light. Um, it's got a lot of your your input. Um, you know, as far as they've got some clip art, they've got text. Um, you've got uh, you can import an image, and um, it does a pretty good job. But it doesn't have the flexibility. What you really don't have is like the control of. You can't tell it to cross hatch and do different things like that. You can set up, you set up the uh, the power, and then they call it the depth. And the higher the number, the deeper it's going to go. So the slower it goes. So it's kind of inverse of your speed. Um, and then you can set up your passes. So it's decent software. It's better than a lot of the other ones I've tried to use. Um, and I was able to do everything that uh, it, that uh, once I get the video out. Um, you'll see all the projects I was able to do with it. Um, so it's it's decent, but it's not it's not your full fledged light burn by any means. This little guy works with light burn. Hmm? Great, it works great with light burn. Now, disclaimer, guys: if you get this and you get the chuck or you get that little weird base that rolls back and forth, you're on your own. Okay. <laughs> Not a fan of those two attachments, but this, as it sits like this, actually works pretty well uh, for something small and relatively cheap. Now, this is the 10-watt Pro, so it's a little more expensive, uh, but this is the longer uh, Nano. And like I said, I've been playing around with it. It, it does great for as long as your work area is you know, the size of a coaster, you're good. Uh, you can take this little plate out of the bottom set it on the corner of a charcuterie board or something and engraved that way uh it's it's not light uh it does come with the little shield thingy so you can put it on here but i just wear glasses uh because it's the shield's kind of the way the focus sets that shield just kind of it's a little much but this little guy like i said without the attachments i like it the attachments mm -mm. don't care for them i can't get the accuracy that i'm used to uh with the attachments <clears throat> and if I guess if I had nothing else to use, maybe I would like it, but it's just not worth the hassle for me. Uh, but this little guy in this configuration actually works pretty well. It's a blue diode too, but it's a Galvo. But it actually installs without a Galvo license, which is cool. It's basically yeah, it's an SY machine. Yeah, it's just G code machine, so. Very cool. Um, Pat's asking, what do y'all use for cleaning the overdust from burning? As in the pieces or as in all over my shop? Uh, I'm guessing on the, on the lasers since it's talking about burning now. Um, I think we both have a similar setup for that is that if you have kind of the residue that's stuck to the material, um, we've got random orbit sanders and using like a 220 grit, something real, really light. That's just going to take that surface. It's not going to dig into your engraving too much, but it'll kind of take that surface, uh, kind of vaporized material off. And then that often puts just a tiny little bit of sawdust into your engravings. And that's where some compressed air works really well. So that's, uh, that's what I, I do. I think you do mostly now that's yeah. not going to work if you're one of the people who, uh, do like the borax method or something because that'll that'll blow up blow out yeah, a lot of that borax stuff is, that's yeah that but i don't i don't use that you're talking about uh tiling on the machines or using a, a block or whatever let's see if i get my little wireless camera to work here no. ah look at that wow well, that is my uh that's my stop Right. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need captions next time. Uh, I got to figure out how to turn the mic on on this. Let's see if I can get it to work. 
But uh, it says my <clears throat> on it. Yeah, well, I wasn't picking you up very well. Uh, well, that's unfortunate. So, yeah, Chris Gallagher clarified that uh, Lightburn sounds like Lightburn works on the Laser Packer Four, and so that's their dual uh, blue diode or blue diode as well as IR, similar to the Extool F1. So it's nice to know that that one works with Lightburn. I actually have a wireless microphone, but I don't have it hooked up to my computer. Yeah. But anyway, you got to see the part. You get you, you get the idea. You could have narrated for me. <laughs> oh, I've got I've got wireless mics. They're right here. <laughs> They're just not hooked up. I use them in my other videos. Uh, if I'm gonna do a live to where I move, know I'm gonna be moving around, I will put one of them and plug it in. I've got a cable somewhere right here that I can plug into. But yeah, I think I got one right here. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can. Maybe. I've got the second line in on my uh, mixer board, so I can just plug that in there and move around if I need to. We all don't have mixer boards. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> I don't uh, have on my uh, audio card, though. Dennis is asking, uh, do you have any knowledge or opinion about a 60-watt Monport laser? Now, did you say you knew someone who had, had one yeah, of those? Yeah. Uh, uh, my my buddy Jeremy Litt over here near me, he got one, and I had never seen one, and he was having problems getting it configured, and so he reached out to me and was like, hey, uh, could you come, you know, look at my machine, and I'm going to be honest with you, it, it wasn't bad. I was, you know, I was kind of like, in the beginning, I was like, eh, it's probably going to be junky, because, you know, I had my experience with the, the, the little M40, and it wasn't great. Uh, but to be honest with you, the one that he had, I, I was really impressed with it, especially for the price. Uh, it had a big work area, automatic bed, like autofocus, whole nine yards. Now, we had to set it up correctly, uh, and, and he, he was having some issues with that. But I even, because I quit using my, my Monport, and he's a, re, he's a retired trooper, and he lives like three miles, four miles that way. Uh, but he... Uh, he said he didn't have a chiller, that he didn't know he had to have one, he was gonna have to order one or whatever, so I wound up letting him get my uh, chiller that I had for my mind port, and that's what he's running now. Uh, but he does a lot of like badges and stuff for law enforcement. Let me, let me see if I can find his, uh, find his page. I'll show you some of the pictures. But he does some pretty cool work, and he's loving the machine. Uh, every time I turn around, he is putting He's putting out pictures and stuff of different uh, badges and so forth that he's doing. And he's doing some pretty good work. So let me find some. He's got a lot of other stuff on his page here. Uh, there we go. Let me save this so we ain't sharing his name necessarily. But, yeah, here we go. That's some of the stuff that he makes, uh, hmm. and it, it it's doing a good job from what I can tell because he's cranking out stuff. Uh, it's uh, it's 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 pretty cool, and as you can see, this is like in front of his fireplace or whatever. So that's that's not a small piece. Uh, so yeah, he likes it. Uh, last time I talked to him, he said it was still running good. Had had even more problems with it, and the only problem he had was it, it just wasn't set up properly like light burn uh it was it was grinding and stuff because the origin wasn't set correctly and he was trying to it, it was a whole it took me probably about 45 minutes of you know testing and and, and to get everything working right <clears throat> the autofocus it wasn't autofocusing correct because the micros and just the way it was set up wasn't correct but once we got it dialed in Man, that thing, you could hit the autofocus button and it'll get, it goes down, touches off with the probe, focuses, and it was ripping through material. Because he, he had called me and was like, hey, I can't cut six millimeter, uh, four millimeter material with, you know, faster than like eight millimeters a second. And I'm like, dude, that is wrong. <laughs> Something ain't right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, he likes it and he does good work. Uh, he had started with an X Tool D1 
and then he moved up to having two X tool D ones. And then after he started selling a lot of his badges and stuff, that's when he decided it was time to get a bigger machine. It was faster because he was spending all night out there letting those things burn. And uh, so he went with Monport because he found a good deal on one. I think he only paid like $3,500 for the machine. Uh, now it's not one that you're gonna wanna try to bring in your house. It's in his garage. So he has a big garage door he can roll it through. Uh, especially if you're having to take it upstairs because it, it is a beast. It's a big old yeah. machine. Well, the nice thing about a lot of those Monport, <clears throat> um, Monport, Home Tech and such is their variations on a theme. And so you hope you get good support from them. But even if you, if you can't, or if your machine's out of warranty, um, the parts are fairly generic and they're, they're easy to find either aftermarket parts or similar parts that will uh, either replace directly or retrofit in fairly easily as well. So um, it's, uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a, a Rayjet or a Trotec where you're going to be pretty much dealing with that company for their parts. So, yeah. and that's one thing when I got mine, you know, eight, nine years ago, I knew I was taking a risk buying one off of eBay, but you know, it was very <laughs> kind of generic and I'd read through a lot of the forums and I'm like, okay, I think I, I've got a good idea of what I'm getting and you know, where I can find parts and who I can help reach out to about support and such. And, you know, it's, it's done well, but I, I went into it feeling pretty confident about working on electronics, feeling pretty confident working about the mechanics of it and such, you know, if, if you don't have that confidence, it's nice to have a company that's, that's going to be able to back you up on it. So. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, from what I saw of it, it wouldn't be that hard to work on. And that was one thing that I told him was like, you know, it looks, the, the parts look like every other laser. So I don't think it would be that hard if, if, if we ever did have to work on it. But so far he hasn't, he hasn't called me back. So uh, I found some more pictures he's got. That's, that's some more of his stuff right there. Uh, but he, uh, he does a lot of those type things and uh, it does good work with them. I, I don't know that I have the patience to be sitting around putting all those little pieces together. Uh, it's not really my thing. But he enjoys it, and like I said, apparently it's, it's, he's making enough money to pay for that machine, so that's what counts. Yep. Oh, I'm on the cut over there. I think I about got all those. Let's see, that's four, that's five. I got to change designs after this one. I got two different two different logos of using all those. <clears throat> but yeah, I hadn't uh, I hadn't used the whole uh, tile function on my machine. I've been just you know, two by four sheet of plywood's done everything I've had to do so far. Well, yeah, I mean, and if you've got a big enough machine and software to drive it, that that you know you don't find yourself in that arena. But you know, it, it more often than not, you your project outgrows your machine, and you got to figure out how to make it work. Then, so yeah, and see, I knew that was probably going to be a problem. That's why I got as big as I could get. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest with you. Looking at the way they've got that machine built, it wouldn't take a whole lot to make that thing eight foot by four foot. Uh, another set of rails, and of course the the screws would be the longest part, the hardest part to replace because it's yeah. just got it's got ball screws. So I mean, just a long ball, longer ball screw and another set of four foot rails. But yeah, and it almost looks like they have put in their engineering a plan to do so because. There's, there's some screw holes and stuff and the way that the rails go together that don't make sense unless you were planning on marrying two of those rails together. So I'm curious to see if that comes out here for too long. Uh, Jeffrey's asking, do, do we start an online store or go straight to Etsy? And I'll let you start with this one because you've actually been doing Etsy a lot longer than I have. Uh, well, actually, I've been doing Etsy less than I... Uh, I, I ran an, an online store. I had my own domain and uh, ran a couple different uh, e-commerce packages on it. And uh, that was a lot of work. It was a lot of pain to set everything up, keep it updated, you know, add in the SSL certs, you know, get email tied into it and such. So it, uh, it depends on you know what you're using for your online store if you're using your own domain and doing your own web development or if you're doing something like a uh 
you know, taking your domain to another uh, place like Shopify is is a big popular one. So um, the benefit that you have of doing your own is you're not going to be competing with people on the same site. Um, but depending on the level of integration you have from other services, setting that up for you, you know, your tax integration, doing your shipping integrations like that, um, that can be some extra work. Uh, the benefit with Etsy is they take care of a lot of that for you. There is definitely a, a cost to it. That's where their fees come in. But, you know, they handle the sales tax for almost any jurisdiction, any any country that you want to ship to, um, which can be a headache. And, and that's, you know, worth something to some people. But you're also then in a, you know, in a small shop in a large pool and they will they will advertise for other shops on your listings. So um, Etsy is kind of the easy way to get started. And then you kind of got to see from there if you feel like you're overwhelmed and, and not getting promoted enough and getting lost in the crowd, it might be good to move off there. But if you've got something that's unique and you've got kind of a niche um, where you do something special that you're not going to have a lot of competition, um, if you price your things right, yeah, Etsy's got some fees, but you factor that into it, and I, I would consider it kind of the easy button for, for setting up online. But with anything else, you're going to have to drive, you know, uh, you, you're going to have to drive the, the you're going to do all the advertising, you know. So if you, you spin up your own domain and you don't have a way to drive people to it, it's you're, you're going to probably see less traffic. I just want to sit. I just want to dedicate this to uh, Brian. Mm. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I started out <clears throat> selling on Facebook locally. Uh, and that's all I still I still don't do physical products on, on Etsy. Uh, just because I don't have time to do the shipping and everything. Uh, everything I do... I do local. I either do drop off somewhere in town, or pick up here at the house, and that's that's all I, I do as far as physical products. But I do have, of course, my Etsy shop for files and stuff. But more or less, the only reason I started the Etsy shop for files was because people kept wanting to buy designs that I did, because not because they necessarily couldn't do the, what the, what I was doing, but just because it was quicker. You know, they'd rather pay me three or five dollars to do something than have to sit down for 45 minutes to an hour and design it. And people started asking, was like, you know, hey, if you'll fix it to where I can buy it, I will buy this file from you so that I don't have to recreate it. Uh, and it kind of become the way that I could help kind of finance, you know, file development. Because some of these files actually do take several prototypes and take several iterations before you get it right. Uh, and so I started doing it at first just to kind of get my money back for the, the countless pieces of, you know, material that I used. And uh, so I still do. Just like the other day, I did the baseball things, and everybody was like, ooh, I want that file. So I stick them out there. You know, if you, if you want to build your files, I got videos that will show you how to build your own. But if you don't, you can come by mine, save yourself some time, and uh, help keep the lights on here at the shack. So, uh <laughs> That's kind of the way. That's kind of the way my Etsy started. I don't do selling per se on Etsy as far as products. Uh, all my stuff's local, and I keep plenty. Uh, especially, like I said, I did baseball season's never really been a big deal for me. I did a few things last year around baseball season: uh, leather gloves, kids want their names on their gloves, you know, stuff like that. But it was just a few. It wasn't a lot of them. Uh, but now this this baseball season, it's actually I think baseball may turn into one of my better uh, events uh, the way it's looking. Well, and and sometimes that uh, what works one year doesn't work the next year. So it's great to have that kind of ever expanding mm -hmm. portfolio of things that you know maybe one year it's you're hot on graduation stuff, but then the next year you're hot on you know spring sports stuff. Um, yeah. so it's, it's good to try to expand that, um, just cause w w we've all been there, you know, something's really hot and then something changes and you're like, Oh, now that dried up. And if you don't have something to backfill it, then that can put you in a hot, hot spot if you're counting on that income or that business. So, and yeah, file development, that's a, that's a real thing. I mean, it took me a good two or three to get this one, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you and your, you and your little clack on a stick. Uh, 
uh, Key Woodcraft, uh, you probably, if you went to uh, Durban's, you probably actually saw my oldest daughter and just didn't know it uh, because she she works there. Uh, so she she sells stuff at Durban's and uh, she's there most every day. So. <laughs> Uh, no, Brian, this, this isn't, it's not going to be my, uh, RV. I've kind of worked something up with a buddy of mine that has one to use. Uh, now don't tell Brandy, but I am going to try to use this one as kind of a, Oh, look, we need one of these, but I do plan on getting one for when I retire, but just not yet. So, uh, this one's more of a borrowed, uh, camper because I don't have one. I offered to rent it, but like the guy's pretty good friends with me and like I help him do stuff and he helps me do stuff. So I'm hoping it's going to not going to cost me a whole lot of money for it and it's going to stay save Steve pretty good pretty good chunk cuz he didn't have to pay, pay for a motel room. Uh so we can kind of minimize his expenses for coming down and everything. Uh and, and yeah. I'm told it's it's not a it's not a breaking bad kind of motorhome so oh no no it's 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 nice it, i would <laughs> it's his is his is nice matter of fact him and his wife and kids just got back from uh spring break uh using it so it's it's nice gonna work on my cousin eddie impression <laughs> uh jeffrey wants to know do either you do consulting that could look at my store and see what i may or may not be doing wrong not per se. I guess we do do consulting, but typically it's in these Sunday night lives where we answer questions and just kind of describe our processes. And guys, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'm, I am no professional at this. My wife has ran businesses for 20 odd years. Uh, me, not so much. Uh, I will tell you this. Maximizing income is all about minimizing expense. And that's where, in my opinion, Etsy helps some people because they do a lot of the stuff that nobody thinks about uh when they go start a website like steve said with marketing and everything uh they do it for you there is a fee for it but if you had to go pay somebody to you know optimize your google uh returns and your google analytics and stuff like that and try to get you to come back in the top so many pages of a search and all these things by the time you do all of that you're going to spend probably more than you would if you just went with Etsy, especially if you're not selling like bukus of uh, stuff. Uh, Etsy's just kind of a, it's kind of a DIY easy thing to do. Now there's a lot of Etsy shops out there that are, com you know, competitive, no doubt, but Facebook, Facebook marketplace, Facebook pages, local word of mouth, most hobbyist small business startups that that'll get you a good bit of business. I try to stay, I try to stick with local. So. Yeah. If you've got a halfway decent community business, you know, like, like a, a group of community businesses and you can do a little networking, you know, that'll, that'll help a lot because then even if they're not the ones going to buy from you, you're going to be in their mind that, Hey, I know this guy, talk to me about that stuff and you can reach them here so uh, you can't be the engineer that <laughs> just figures out how to make stuff you got to be a salesman you got to be a, a bit of a networking person you got to get out of your shell a little bit to do that so and brandy's not here to say it but i will tell you this go find out in your community is there a chamber of commerce is there a local merchants association is there a group of people like-minded like you that you could partner with or maybe you know do things for do things with to kind of help get you some exposure even if it's free stuff or dirt cheap stuff you know people a lot of these people talk about oh we well, don't you know you, you got to price it this way that way no you don't you when you price something if you're trying to get your business going sometimes you got to give stuff away because the advertisement that you get from that one or two things that you gave away may bring business into you. Now, once you get jobs coming in, <coughs> you do need to be careful how you price it and make sure that the uh, profit margin is suitable for you. But in the beginning, freebies have gotten me more work than I, I could even care to mention because 
I give stuff away like a lot of times. I'll go into a place and just give them a bottle opener or something, you know, <coughs> and be like, oh, yeah, you can do that. Yes, I can. And I can put pretty much anything you want on that. So if you want them, let me know. This is how much I can do them for. And sometimes they call back. Sometimes they don't. But that's literally like a 50 cent blank. I have inhaled some dust. <coughs> so yeah it's uh whatever you have around um doing a little networking will help you out and yeah i i fact you know uh, your your freebies can also be i mean you got to learn your project you can make some make some freebies considered advertising um consider going to a craft fair and don't set a sales goal just say the cost of this is my tuition on making some contacts it's going to you know learning learning what people want um be you got to be okay with spending some money not making money necessarily on every single thing as you're first getting started in a in a new area whether it's a new new thing you're doing whether it's a new community or, or area you're trying to tap or if you're just starting out your business so yeah uh pat's got an interesting question about air assist. i'll let you go first because you know my answer <laughs> uh i use it all the time um when engraving and or when cutting now on if if the laser gives me the flexibility to do it um having variable speed being able to maybe bring that air assist down a little bit during engraves can be can be helpful but if you play with your settings you should be able to get a quality engrave while still running your air and that's going to do a lot for you as far as keeping your machine running better keeping your lens clean uh and in some cases actually giving you a better burn than uh than not having it running so i i always have it on at some mm. level and did you just spill that on yourself it came out the hole in the top yeah okay <laughs> it's water it's just really cold water and it hit me in my sensitive parts Ugh. Eh. all right that was a mess Oh, uh, yeah, I run air assist. Like, this this job over here is running air assist on these engraves. And I just poured water in my lap, so that's not, you know. <laughs> but this is this is with air assist on, on the MK2. And the reason that I do it is because, first of all, it keeps the laser healthy. Secondly, I'm still, I'm still going to run over this with a little bit of really fine grit sandpaper because there is gonna be a little bit of yellowing around them most of the time. These aren't as bad as some of them are, but I'll still hit it with a little bit of sandpaper and then hit it with the air hose before I go outside and clear coat them. This one right here, I don't know if you noticed it a while ago, my material wasn't quite big enough. Uh. <laughs> so that's wasted. <laughs> I just sand the rest of the edges and they won't notice. I thought about shrinking the design like a half a millimeter, but yeah, I, I, my OCD, I will know that it wasn't right, so it's going in the trash. It's, I, I was just using those little scrap pieces. I had to go get some larger scrap pieces just to make sure they don't happen again. Steve Ray's asking, what software do you guys use for business sales and bookkeeping? Pretty sure we use the same software now, don't we? Yeah, uh, we're both using QuickBooks Online. Um, it uh you know like here again you you got to factor in there's there is a cost to it but how much time and possibly savings will it give you um time is money as well as you know missed uh missed invoices missed uh tax deductions things like that so um it does cost about 30 dollars a month for you know the small business edition that uh has probably more tools than you need especially starting out but uh, it does work pretty well once you get it set up uh, at helping you keep track of everything you need to. So, um, you know, when you are first starting out, if nothing else, do a search. You can get some pretty good spreadsheets that will help you kind of keep track of expenses and income and maybe some tax categories. It's better than nothing. Nothing worse than getting to the end of the year and just having a stack of receipts <laughs> and notes and everything else. So, you know, yeah. get in the habit early on of, you know, whether you do it daily, weekly, monthly, 
have an organization system where you're keeping track of these. You know, QuickBooks makes it easy. You go to the store, it's probably already tracking your mileage because if you're running on your phone, your phone's tracking your movements and it's going to go, hey, you went from here to here. Was that a business trip? When you get there, if you have your, if you're using an account that's a business account, it's going to notice the expense. And if you take a picture of your seat, it'll tie the expense to the, the cost and, you know, half your work is done for you. Come tax time, it's just going to pull all that stuff together and, and uh, either make something easy for your tax person or you can roll it right into, uh, it's through into it. So what is it, TurboTax? Um, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll roll yeah. right into it as well. Well, I haven't figured out how to get it to like export into TurboTax, but what it does do once you get ready to, at the end of the year to get everything packaged for your taxes, it basically will print you out like a sheet that has yeah. income, uh, expenses, like all your deductible stuff. And it's, it's just a list. And all you have to do is go into TurboTax and when you're putting in your income or whatever, then you go in and put in all the expenses and stuff like that as well. Uh, it's, it is definitely handy. Uh, I got a buddy of mine that <laughs> I think it took him two or three weeks to get his taxes done because he didn't have bookkeeping software and he's trying to deduct stuff for his business and so forth. And he called me the other day and he's like, dude, what software do you use? Because I am done with, <laughs> you know, not doing it. And yes, it's $30 a month. But for me, like when I do my stove covers for Clayton's, to generate those invoices and send those, you know, it takes me like a minute to do an invoice because all of my items are already in there. The prices, the taxes is already figured, all that. And you just hit the button and send it to them. So it makes things a lot easier. Sales tax, when you are consolidating and, and trying to pay your sales tax at the end of the month, which I got to do that this month. All you got to do is go in there and go pay my sales tax. And it pulls up a sheet that shows which you know jurisdictions you owe how much money to. And then you just go to your state's website, punch that in and submit. That's another reason I like Etsy. I don't have to fool with Etsy because if I had to submit sales tax to all 50 states, including Puerto Rico and all that, I would go crazy. So I let Etsy handle all of that. All I do is my local stuff and all of those sales tax collections go to either the city of Clanton or Chilton County. <clears throat> As I said before, most of my stuff is either I'll meet you in town and hand it to you or you can come to my house and pick it up. So mostly all my tax goes through Chilton County and the state of Alabama. Occasionally, I have a customer in Clanton that may, you know, I may set up it, like when I set up at May Mays and I sell stuff there, then I have to pay taxes into the city and stuff like that. But for the most part, I try to keep everything, pick it up here, or either I'll meet you at the gas station with it. So that way it keeps my sales tax simple. Mm -hmm. That, I don't have to have a business license for all these other little municipalities around here. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things to look into, you know, between state and local municipalities as far as uh, what's required to do business in them. But um, that's where finding tools, um, you know, it, the, the, the fees can seem large at first until you see the time they save you. And, and as, as long as they're saving you time for what they cost, they're worth it. You know, it's always good to review that. But uh, I've that's one thing I've found with the uh, with QuickBooks online as well as Etsy. And actually, they have a, a way of pulling your Etsy information into QuickBooks. So mm -hmm. I, I don't even have to like... To, yeah, I've got yeah. mine tied together. So it, it, uh, it, it, you know, finding tools that will plug into all your various resources is, is nice to kind of have a, you know, a single point that you can work from for the most part. But <laughs> yeah, that's the cool thing about Etsy is, like I said, it, all, it ties in. So every time you pay sales tax somewhere on an Etsy order, uh, it, it already knows. And it's already in there. It's already categorized. It's where it needs to be, whole nine yards. So Pat's asking about the S40 Pro has auto air assist. It's great. Is there a way in Lightburn to get different pressures? Uh, not yet. Um, now, I did hear there is a uh, beta version, I think, of 1.6 that specifically addresses some things for the S1. I have not had time to go and look at it to see what they might be adding. 
Um, so right now it will, uh, I believe, just turn it on or off. And then you have to manually adjust it from there if you want. But um, we'll see um, as they've been adding various macros and other things to do some of the other uh, like uh, autofocus tools and such. Hopefully um, we'll see some added support. But, you know, that's kind of up to Lightburn spending the time and Xtool being willing to play nice with them also. Yeah. <clears throat> with with the Lightburn operated machines, you could set up a two stage air assist one that would run you know pretty much the whole time and the other one that would only come on when you're cutting but you would have to do like a split line have two different pneumatic relays and all that i've seen it done and i've thought about doing it but i've got mine dialed into where it does it it, it does a good job whether i'm cutting or whether i'm engraving and somebody asked earlier i saw somebody was asking what pressure did i run i don't I don't adjust my air assist based on the pressure. I don't care what the pressure is. The way I set mine up is I'll, I'll draw a big line all the way across my work area and I'll sit there and adjust that regulator as it's cutting. And when it gets to where I have a hard time seeing where the cut is because it's so clean and so small, I leave it alone. I lock the regulator and that's where I run it at. And it's, it's less than five PSI, I think, on my X40 over here. And same thing for the for the longer. It's not a lot of air pressure. Uh, if you've got the right size hole in the nozzle, which the X40's got a, a really nice setup on it, it doesn't take a lot of air pressure to to have the desired effect. Too much air pressure can actually cause it to stain the material more if if you if you go too high with it. And you know, as far as like for air compressor's sake, the less air pressure you use, the better, uh, because the air compressor doesn't continually run. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> All right, uh, guys. Hour and thirty-seven. I better keep it coming. <laughs> so yeah, De Dennis made a comment that uh, started on Etsy and done well, but realized wasn't charging enough uh, to cover you know cost of material, tools, fees, Etsy, and taxes. And and that's a thing that, especially when you get into selling physical goods online. Um, there can be a lot of extra costs that you don't think about with that. And so, um, but, but even that, I mean, I see people selling in person that their prices might make up their, you know, their cost of goods, but then, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at self-employment taxes and those are often, you know, 30% of your, your income. And so you want to factor in all that stuff and make sure you're at the end of the day, actually covering your expenses, you know, shipping, there's the cost of the shipping, there's the cost of the boxes, there's the cost of the labels, there's the cost of the tape, there's the cost of the packing material. There's a lot of costs to shipping goods out. So, you know, make sure you're you're taking those into account as well, because you could get to the end of the year and go, well, I thought I was making money, but I really wasn't. So it's definitely a good point to kind of review all of those extra costs to make sure that, you know, whatever you're able to sell it at is actually worth your time and, and money. Mm -hmm. yes it does especially if it's something that like requires you to be hands-on with it a lot like these things where i just basically throw a piece of wood in there and let it run once i built the file you know that's not that hard the hardest thing i'm going to do with these is touch them up with some sandpaper blow them off take them outside clear coat ever clear clear coat them flip them over take my little stamp put my clack shack logo on the back clear coat them and send them packing so these are actually for reefs. Very cool. <clears throat> Good deal. S30 Pro, not a bad machine at all. A uh, buddy of mine's been wanting to get into lasering, and I think I'm going to wind up letting him use the uh, S30 that I have because I told him that's a, it's a good, solid working machine with not a lot of whole st stuff that can tear up. So I think it's a, I think it'd be a good one for, uh, especially somebody that's new. Mm -hmm. You've got a couple of them, had you? Don't you have like two different S30s? Uh, I have the, uh, I have the five watt as well as the 20 watt uh, in the Sculpt Fund series. So yeah, both, uh, uh, both have been decent machines. Um, I don't remember 
I think I gave the thir the five watt to someone. I do still have the twenty watt um, hanging around in case I need to troubleshoot someone for something for someone and such. But uh, yeah, they're, they're decent machines, and I've I've heard too they used to have more of like this semi flexible but semi rigid PVC hose that was for the air assist. But I hear they went to the more like kind of the rigid rubber that you see in like the uh, like the Acers and the Wizmaker and the those those machines had a little more. It, it didn't kink it as, as easily, so it was still flexible, but it was as it was a yeah. thicker wall, so it didn't didn't kink up. That was the only my only issue with the earlier sculpt fun machines. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, key, I most of my stuff is custom, so I don't have a lot of inventory just sitting around. Now blanks, I, I do like I, I do stockpile blanks. Uh, I've got a lot of them in my trailer that I use at events, uh, especially like the little small keychains and stuff like that that I do. Uh, I do a, a good bit of Christmas ornaments, but the one thing that I have learned about Christmas inventory, never put 2023, 2024, 2025 on your Christmas ornaments. Never do that. I did that the first year, and I didn't sell all of them, and then I had to throw them away the next year. Uh, I've got tubs. And so what does it sell this year? Of course, if I've got a bunch of them left over from last year, I'm not going to make a bunch more of those for the following year. But I'm not going to throw those away because sometimes they will sell. Uh, but I try to look at, because I've got, I've got a file that basically has every Christmas ornament that I do in that file. And I'll look and see which ones do I not have any of. Uh, it can shift. It can change. One year. This ornament may be hot. The next year, this one may be hot. But a lot of times, it'll run pretty consistent from year to year. And so I'll look at what I don't have any of, and that's what I'll go back and just bulk those out, put them in that tub, take them to the event with me. I usually only have, you know, my little Christmas tree set up, and I'll have them hanging on it, and I'll put like three or four of each on my little Christmas tree. And as I sell them, I kind of wrap myself a note on my little notepad and I'll occasionally go to the trailer or either open the little tub if I bring it with me and just grab a handful of them and put them back on the tree. Uh, but you'll, you'll start, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, October, if you ain't already got Christmas stuff built and advertised it, you're going to be late. Uh, but I, I've got tons of Christmas ornaments still left over from last year because I had a few designs that I liked. And a few people liked, but not everybody liked. So I, I had some leftovers. But uh, but just don't put 2024 or 2023 or whatever on them. That way you can sell them next year. Because I, I screwed up and did that one year. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, if you've got something that you can, like you say, you could create the base and that gets customized, those are the kind of things that, if you've got some time, you got a machine that's not busy while you're doing something else and you've got maybe some scrap or you've got some stock that you know you're going to need them. I, I try to, you know, anytime I've got, you, know, you can slide something in, keep that extra machine running and save you some time in the future is worth it. But you also don't want to get so stocked up on items that you're not going to sell. So you got to have a feeling that it's something that, that either will have longevity to it or that you know how much. Um, but yeah, a, a lot of a lot of what I do is either not necessarily um, seasonal based. Uh, a lot, you know, I still do a lot of custom part cutting for people um, for for model airplane stuff and other items. Um, so so I'm kind of with Clack there. Is that a lot of my work is kind of more on demand type stuff. Um, but uh, if you are planning on doing doing those uh, sales, I mean everybody complains about Christmas being up fall time, but that's when the, that's when things got to get in the stores for people to start buying them. And, you know, if, if they're not sold out by Thanksgiving, they start going on clearance at that point. You just kind of have to start thinking ahead about those cycles. Yeah. Dennis, there, there are a lot of them out there and that's why I say stick with your local crowds because if you look online if I have a lot of a lot of the jobs I get, people send me a picture they took off of an Etsy shop 
like they'll screenshot something they see on Etsy and send it to me and go, hey, can you make this? And I'm like, well, not exactly like that, but I can give you my twist of it and it'll look really similar. And so they'll send me the picture and I'll just look at the picture, figure out how to make it. And I'll design it in Lightburn, make the product and sell it back to them. And then typically when I do that, then I share pictures of it on my Facebook page. And now all of a sudden, you know, I get three or four, five, six more orders for that same thing. So that helps me because it's hard. It's hard to get like 100 percent of your money back from a design if you're only doing one. Now, the first order that I had for these bases, they wanted three of them. So I was like, OK, so I kind of spread my price out over the three as far as designing the file. And it was a relatively easy file. They they had the logo, provided the logo and everything. The rest of it was text, except for the little two threads that I had to make, which was easy enough. I just found me a baseball SVG file, traced it, used Bolian to trim it to fit my little triangular home base plate, and uh, boom, it was fixed. But since I sold those three, now I've sold three more. Now I've got orders for more of them. And, you know, eventually that little design, the time that it took me to design that file, I'll you know, be able to just wash that out because I'll sell enough of them. Uh, but don't stick necessarily to cutting boards. And, and like I said, online, it's hard to compete with online, except for the fact that they're going to call you and go, hey, I know it's Friday, and I know I need this by Tuesday. I found one on Etsy that I like, but there's no way it's going to be here in time. Can you make it? that's how I get most of my new customers. I'm going to be honest with you because they procrastinated to the point to where Etsy's no longer an option and they got to find somebody local that can do it. And if they start asking around or if they get on Facebook and go, Hey, I'm in search of somebody that can engrave my, we'll just say something I've done a hundred times. My uh, clothes hangers from my wife's or my daughter's wedding. I want to engrave bridesmaid, groom, blah, 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 to all the clothes hangers. Is there anybody in town that can do that? And like 20 people on Facebook will be like, the Clack Shack, at the Clack Shack, you know, start tagging me. That's how I get the majority of, of the jobs that I get is just word of mouth. I don't try to compete on Etsy making cutting boards because I can't. I just, <laughs> I'm not going to go through that much trouble for a cutting board and ship it with free shipping and all that. I'm, I'm just not. Oh. I got plenty to keep me busy here local. Yeah, unless you've got some sort of unique style that no one's done yet, uh, that, you know, it's 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 hard to jump in online and just do what everybody else is doing. So that's where kind of coming up with your thing, and or you know, getting getting known locally, like Clack said, that's uh, that that'll keep you from doing the race to the bottom on price. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Key Woodcraft. Now, uh, I don't. Now, see, I have, a, I have a thing that I can do that nobody else around here can do. And that's where I make a lot of my money. Let's say your granddad planted a tree when you were a kid in front of the house that he owned and lived in his entire life. And then a storm comes along and blows that tree over. And you really would like to have a piece of furniture or a table or some type of something to remember granddad by. You can bring me an eight foot piece of that log and I can turn it into a piece of furniture for you. That's where the money's at because taking that log, <coughs> putting it on a sawmill, cutting it up, drying the lumber, planting it down, making lumber out of it, designing and building something and then taking and putting a, you know, I, I built one, I did one, it was a memorial piece, and it actually had a QR code on it that you could, and it had an a, a image, and you could scan the QR code, and the QR code was a voicemail that the dad had called his son like a week before he passed away, and just basically just to tell him he loved him and, you know, hated that they didn't have more time to spend together, blah, 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 and it was just this, I mean, like tear-jerking voicemail. And it was the last thing that the, the guy had ever messaged. And I was able to take that file and change it into a QR code that you could scan and it would play it back on your phone. And nobody else could, nobody else around here does that, you know? So, and it was, <coughs> you know, I've got, I've got logs up there now to where people would be like, hey, I'll bring you all these logs if you'll just make me one cutting board out of this thing, you know, from my wife's father. 
that passed away because he planted the tree. You know, it, that's the kind of stuff that 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 I like doing because that stuff, you know, it's it's stuff that you know people are going to hang on to. They're not going to just throw it away next year when they redecorate. Those are things that that family will have that piece for a lifetime. Now, there's a lot of pressure because you don't want to mess something up like that, but I really enjoy doing stuff like that. Yeah, so uh for me I for me it's more of like if it's a highlight you know like it's the it's the inlay or it's the the accent piece it's i i generally don't do a lot of primary work with too many exotics it just uh it gets expensive and quite honestly a lot of people will just they're happy with the you know the maple with the cherry or the walnut contrast and they think that's great and good enough and around here that's there's plenty of that stuff it doesn't cost me an arm and leg but there are times when having that kind of exotic color, uh, you know, purple hearts, one of those very unique coloring, colored woods that uh, can, can give a piece that nice accent, but you generally end up paying for it. So. <laughs> well, if I need some, if I need something to be red, I just, I grab me some mid wax red over there. <laughs> it's not quite this, not quite the same, but yeah. Um, Adrian's asking, uh, what is the best software for us for laser engravers? Um, and, and I'll be honest, I do a lot of my design work in other software. Um, I, I don't do a lot of designing in Lightburn. I, I'll do a lot of primary work in other software and bring it into it. So, uh, but that's because I've been using those softwares back when I was just doing design work and you know printing stuff out for templates to uh using it with the cnc you know i i would design in autocad or sketchup uh and then uh, or even illustrator and then bring it into the other software and just set up the the file from there now i have gotten more used to working in lightburn for some of the more basic designs and such but if it's a more integrated piece that has a lot of interlocking parts i still kind of go back to my 3d modeling tools and such so kind of just has a little bit more of what your personal process is uh, and what maybe you've gotten used to over time so um but i know uh i know a lot of people um they they like to use just the one piece of software and so for them that you know tends to be you know might be light and whatnot or uh vgard for from the CNCs. Yeah, I'm a light burn and VCAR kind of guy myself. Speaking of which, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh huh. I don't think your camera's doing it justice. It's not. It, it, it doesn't. <laughs> it, it, you have to get the, the light just right. Yeah. Uh, and that's an exotic blue wood right there. That only grows in Alabama. That's very exotic. That's actually some leftover pieces of a stove cover. Uh, and this was that dumpster find that I got the other day, the uh, clear acrylic. And this is a CNC slash laser job because the backdrop and the little frame up underneath here that's white that kind of tries to hide the lights best it can. Yeah, those were laser cut using the same file that I did with the CNC to do this. But yeah, it, I'm gonna take some pictures of it because yeah, the camera's not camera's not doing it right. But it looks pretty cool. Uh, and I did use blue stain on this pine because it's a it's a badge and our uniforms are blue. So it's, I think it's pretty cool. Considering this was made out of all leftover scrap materials, I think it turned out real well. To yeah, the point where it's to, to the point where it's gonna be hanging in the patrol room at, the PD. Oh, pretty cool. They're very cool. Run it on the battery pack. <laughs> so, uh, Dennis is asking, do people contact you by email or do you give your phone number on Facebook? Um, primarily, I try to keep it through business channels, a business email and such. But if you, uh, you know, if you're just starting out and you want to, or people really hound you for a phone number, um, you might want to look into uh, Google Voice. Uh, a lot of places you can actually 
just grab a, a Google phone number off there and uh, you can kind of set that up through just an app on your smartphone. Doesn't need to be tied to your normal number. And so that'll help keep your personal number separate from you know, a secondary number that you can use for your business without adding a huge expense to it. Um, so it's something to, to look into to give that option for you. But uh, I tell people you're gonna have an easier time reaching me via, via email or messaging me on face Facebook than trying to call me because uh, generally if people are calling me, they're either wrong or it's a loved one that's in a lot of trouble. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I uh, I do them either messenger or email. I have people constantly want me to call them. But the problem I have with calling people is I work a full-time job and then I basically work full-time out here and I just don't have I just don't have time. Uh I spend more time sitting and talking to you guys than I do sitting and talking to anybody. Uh cuz if you come over here, you're going to you're going to talk to me while I'm working. But yeah, here you, here you go right there. That's how you get your Alabama blue wood right there, guys. <laughs> that is Minwax Navy. And then I went over it with some Minwax. Uh, I think I used semi-gloss on that. Rattle can, uh, clear coat. Well, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble here. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, Woodmiser LX25 is what I got. Now, it is not the easiest machine to operate because it ain't got power or nothing. But it makes for some really, really cool wood. Uh, my wife's kitchen table, that was... See, you're going to be like me, Key. Uh, my wife, when she found out I bought a sawmill because my buddy actually let it out at lunch one day, uh, she found out I'd ordered a sawmill after she got over being surprised, I won't call it mad, but after she got over being surprised that I'd ordered a $4,000 sawmill, uh, she said, well, I guess since I had been looking at getting me a kitchen table and most of them were four or $5,000, I guess if you could use that sawmill to make me a kitchen table, that would kind of make it worth the purchase. And so guys, I went on a hunt for white oak and I finally found me a nice 22 inch white oak that had blew down now down, down near the river. And I spent half a day winching that thing up a hill to get it on my trailer <laughs> and <laughs> took it to the mill, milled it. Uh, I didn't have a kiln back then. So I built me like a tent in the shack here. When I first boxed the shack in, I built like a tent out of a uh, vapor barrier. And I set a dehumidifier over inside the tent and let it run for like a month. Uh, to dry that wood and believe it or not i ended up making a kitchen table now looking at it now i screwed up so much on that table but she loves it i've even asked hey can i take that out to the shop and fix some of these little things and she's like nope you're not touching it uh, but that was one of the reasons i'd even looked at getting a laser is because underneath that table and nobody will ever see it but underneath that table i got me one of my sharpies before I coated it and everything and I got under there and I wrote a bunch of stuff underneath the table Bible verses and dates and all that kind of stuff and I was like you know this sharpish okay but that'd be really cool if I could do it with a laser and so that's when I ordered my first laser so sawmill building the table led to me getting a laser so it's all Brandy's fault if I hadn't built the table I wouldn't have got a laser <laughs> But I've got pictures of that table somewhere. It's pretty, it's pretty neat. Uh, I'll have to find that right quick for those of you that have never seen it. Well, getting the sawmill is one thing, but yeah, then you got to get the trailer to be able to get the logs to the sawmill. Oh, you if know, you don't have a tractor, yeah. don't get a sawmill. You got to have a tractor. Log handling is the biggest, that is the biggest part of sawmill it is handling the logs because they will whoop you if you don't have a tractor i had a 28 horsepower tractor when i first got the sawmill and now i have a 50 horse and i'm going to tell you that is total game changer i don't know i'm not believing i don't even have a picture of her table in here i, I sure don't uh hmm. i got pictures of the coffee tables but not the kitchen table i'm gonna have to do better on that 
Oh, well. Well, we're running up on two hours, and I haven't made the pitch for our laser engraving community member map. So if you uh, haven't seen it before, we do have a, uh, a Google map that you can uh, drop your pin on by filling out a form. And both the links should be down below each of the videos on, uh, on our pages. So um, what that is is just a map that has pin drops from everybody that has uh, – volunteered their location and maybe their business name or their personal name, screen name, or no name at all, but just gives us an idea of where all our listeners are at. And uh, it's uh, A, really cool to see that, but B, um, we also will occasionally use it in the future to say, hey, I'm going to such and such event and I'll be in, uh, you know, North Carolina for something. And I see there's a number of people, Do you, you know, maybe we'll do a small meetup and whatnot. Uh, or you can, you know, go on there and click on the names and see maybe who's around you. And if you want, you could reach out to each other and, and uh, you know, form some small communities there. But either way, it's just kind of a cool thing to see where everybody's at. Um, it's completely optional. And like I say, you don't even need to use your street address. You can just use a city, state or a landmark near you. As long as Google Maps understands where you're pointing it to, it'll put that pin on there. So um, feel free to fill that out and uh, fill out our map even further. I'm trying to find this picture. <laughs> That's going to bother me. I, I can't believe I don't have pictures of that. I know I will. Uh, here's the coffee tables. Here's the coffee table. Uh, yeah, I made uh, I made this guy out of poplar, and I made this guy. And that whitewash was not my idea. That was my, Brandy's idea. She wanted them whitewashed. So, it's, a, it's a farmhouse look. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can find something. I, I know I've got a picture of that table. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure when I was building it, I did like pictures as I built. But that was like some show enough early clack shack stuff there. Like that was way back. But I'll try to find that right quick. If anybody's got any questions, I can't see them right now. I'm scrolling. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Mark, uh, I actually, uh, gotten to know Matt pretty well. He's, uh, only about an hour away from me and I was over to his place early on, uh, after he got that sawmill going and, uh, he's had a few, few sketchy maneuvers with that. But since then he's, he's really upped his game with his, uh, material handling and his whole massive barn he put in there and such. So hopefully we won't see him launched anytime soon, but. Anybody else who hasn't checked it out and is curious about sawmilling, Matt Carmona is someone here in, uh, up in the Twin Cities area of Minnesota who uh, built his own pretty massive uh, custom sawmill and uh, even offers plans for it and uh, has since moved to some bigger acreage and such where he's able to use it still. And he's cut, cut uh, out some pretty massive slabs on it and uh, some interesting content. He's general traditional woodworker as well, so kind of a fun channel and he's a he's a fun guy I have fun hanging out with him every chance i get so yeah I got um, black, black walnut up there yeah well we get a lot of that uh martin how did the name ventari come about well <laughs> this <laughs> this goes back uh to uh late high school or college and i had to come up with a username for some system and i don't remember what it was at the time but I needed a username and all the typical ones were taken. And so I was using kind of one of these random name generator things. Um, uh, and uh, it, it was kind of a couple of different, uh, you know, play on science fiction kind of stuff. And it wasn't used anywhere. So it became a uh, an easy name for me to use most most places because no one else has it. And it's just stuck with me. It's It's been my... You know, it, it was basically I just needed a username for something and it kind of just became my online persona. So there's no meaning behind it. There's <laughs> nothing crazy other than I just needed a, a username at one point. Hmm. All right. I found it. All right. So I found what I was looking for. And here we go. All right. So there's the table. And it needs it, it needs to be resanded, and I want to epoxy the top of it, 
but she won't let me. Uh, that little, the little bench that you see, I was actually putting it in there just to let her look at it before I finished it, so the bench doesn't have any finish on it at the time. But yeah, that's that's the table that I wound up making, and uh, it was a five foot table. And so, in order to keep the chairs, because there's four of us, I had to pull the the trestle legs in a little bit to keep from like cracking your knees. But I made it work. She didn't want an eight foot. The kitchen area is not big enough for an eight foot. She didn't want a seven foot. I think I. I no, she didn't want a six foot, so I think I wound up going with a seven foot, but I built it so that you can get the chairs under it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty neat. It got me out of the doghouse for buying a sawmill. That was what <laughs> I was after, uh, was just to get me out of the doghouse, literally. And there's a doghouse I built from sawmill lumber. <laughs> uh, and this was another project. Guys, if you're wanting to get a sawmill, this is another one. Uh, these are one inch cedar uh, boards that I cut to uh, help my wife with her shoe problem that she has. Uh, I went and put the little tracks in with the brackets and the, the closet smells like cedar and it doesn't smell like shoes. <laughs> She's going to kill me if she saw that. <laughs> oh, very cool. But yeah, that was my very first table build, like kitchen table build. And, and like I said, it's, it's riddled with problems, but I was working with, I think I had like an eight inch chop saw trying to chop true four by fours in half. Hmm. It, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're our own worst critics. So a lot of people will see the handmade and, and, uh, Either they absolutely won't see the imperfections that we all see, or they look past that and go, hey, that's the character of you making this for me. And so, you know, good on yeah. you for uh, for getting that done for, for Brandy. So, Well, I didn't have much choice at the time. <laughs> well, I mean, still, good on you for getting it done. <laughs> so, anyway, well, we are uh, at two hours, eight minutes. It's uh, past nine o'clock here. Uh, any, any last thoughts, comments, or questions? Anybody? Greg, <laughs> I'm assuming you do have your point of origin set to the front left on that machine. Cause I, I'm not, no, I'm not sure what you got going on over there, but it's gotta be something. That is just, I'd love to be able to get in that machine and see. But your origin should be front left. If your origin is not front left, uh, then that's going to be a problem. I, I, I really wish I knew how to help you fix that. But. Now, pay no attention to my machine because it's not homing. It's, it's parking. I've got mine set to park back there out of the way after it gets through the job. Uh, and I also have a park position that I can move it to to take a picture of the work area. Uh, Kyle, it, the best place to sell online, it, it's, it's again, one of those kind of it depends uh, things, you know. So for me, I actually did a lot of my sales initially when I got my machines, it was for my RC airplane hobby. And so... I was selling things through specialty groups, you know, various forums and websites that where people that are into model aviation were on, you know, so they had classified areas and then they had ways you could advertise as well. Um, you know, so if, if you're if you've got a niche area like that, look for where those groups are. Sometimes they're Facebook groups, sometimes they're local buy sell groups and such like that. Um, if you've got enough of a niche that you can do a little advertising yourself, you know, you can put it on Etsy. But if it's just something out there that where everybody is doing the same thing, then you're just gonna, you know, it's gonna get watered down. So that's where I try to try to go to the people that I feel my customers are at. So um, if it's if you're trying to build up a local local business, local things, then Facebook Marketplace is probably one of your best places to start as far as online. But uh, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of factors to that. Um, 
I would say the important thing is um, set yourself a budget of the tools you want to use and, you know, at least, you know, dip your toe into the water with it. Um, sometimes it's, you're just going to learn a few different ways that don't work and one or two that do work. So. Yeah. Uh, Greg, it should be right there. It's got to be this bottom left little dot right here. Yeah, let's make uh, you bigger. Yeah, right there. Now, make sure you're running absolute coordinates also. And make sure that it's checked appropriately. But I don't, I don't know what else it could be. If you added the machine back using my profile, this should have already been set. But if you didn't use my profile, then maybe maybe that's the, maybe that's the problem. But yeah, that's that's where your origin setting is. It needs to be front and left. And then make sure you've got this over on absolute coordinates. And that's that's it. That was it. I hope you just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope that was a delayed. Uh, and and that comment. was under uh, you go to your edit menu and device settings. Yes. Go to edit. And then scroll down to where you see device settings. It's going to be a little wrench with a cross with a screwdriver. Uh, and that's that's where you set that origin at. Uh, unless something's got messed up, I, I don't know. And I don't understand why it's only doing it with certain file types. That's weird. But that's the things I would I would check. And you may just have to reach out to uh, Leo and them and, and see if maybe there's something else. But... Unless you swap the board out and maybe plug something up backwards or something. I don't know what else it could be. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's been fun, guys. Uh, uh, Sharon, I think a lot of a lot of the guys, uh, like, they'll post stuff in Laser Engraving community page from time to time. Uh, but I don't know that we have a, a list, so to speak. Yeah, I'll... Uh We'll see. Let's see if there's some way we can curate that. Um, maybe I can create something similar to this map that people could drop their their information on if they want to share their their websites to uh, out with people. So we'll look into that. Yeah, that's that is a possibility. But anyway, guys, uh, I've got this this one here going to finish burning here tonight. But other than that. If y'all got no more questions, I guess we're going to let y'all get back to everything and y'all have a safe week. Uh, this coming up week, I think we've decided that we will be having uh, STL Woodworking. Uh, Greg, I think. And Greg is his name, I think. Pretty sure it's Greg. It's either Greg or George. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> we're going to have him on, I guess, uh, this coming up Sunday night. So if that's something you're interested in, yes, it is Greg. Uh, if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and mark it on your calendars. I'll try to get the thumbnail out as soon as I can, but uh, I'll, you know, give him a heads up, give him a week's notice so he can come up with something maybe to just knock our socks off with project-wise or advice-wise. Uh, but as always, we like to kind of, you know, mix it up a little bit. And I, I know as much as y'all love me and Steve, you could use a break every now and again. But that's about it, guys. Uh, oh, I did order some, some more epoxy toys for epoxy stuff. So look look forward to that. I'm going to try to get creative with some cutting boards and actually doing molds. I actually bought me some molding material, like mold making material. And the plan is that I'm going to create a CNC project, take that CNC project, turn it into a mold, and then use that mold to cast acrylic objects so instead of actually making it with the cnc i'm going to be making the mold with the cnc if that makes any sense to you guys but <clears throat> i think that'll be pretty cool i'm looking forward to playing with it whenever i get a chance so that's all i got steve sounds good yeah no i uh i'll be wrapping up the uh i got some video editing to do and then hopefully i'll get into maybe a project that's installed for a little bit uh, and then uh, that Adam Stack A70 is going to show up. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm going to be, I, I, I got to start packing. I got airplanes to prep. I got laser stuff to prep. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm rapidly running out of time. I got about 10 days before I'm 
uh, on the road. And then, and my first day on the road is also kind of interesting mixed in with some, <laughs> some meetings as well. So, um, but, uh, I'm looking forward to it. And, um, uh, so we'll, we'll still see everybody online, but I might be a little ragged the next, next 10 days. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jeffrey, feel free to share. Uh, like I said, even in the laser in the laser engraver community page, we we don't not want you guys sharing your stuff. But the rules kind of give as much as you take. So if you're if you're one of those folks that's wanting to try to you know advertise or whatever, that's that's cool. But also be interactive, answer questions when you can. Uh, you know, share content, pictures, inspirational stuff that you've made, whatever. Uh, but we just want it to be a, a give and take, not just a take, take, take. And that's why we try to keep the spammers and the, and the just, you know, shameless pluggers out of there. Uh, we don't mind you plugging your stuff, but just make sure that you're interacting with other people's stuff as well and being a member of the community. So, but yeah, but that's it, guys. Uh, y'all have a good one and uh, see y'all next week with STL Woodwork. <laughs> Looking forward to it. See ya. <laughs>